Hey everybody, Debbie here with another Stratego game analysis. This is going to be game number five of our uh, Playing From Behind series with the major attack strategy. And the major attack strategy is pretty simple. You just attack with your majors at the start of the game until you find the marshal. Once you find the marshal, you play a normal game. But you have to use all your majors up if you don't find the marshal. And you can be down one, two, or three majors. It's a lot of fun. You have to see if you can win playing from behind, but sometimes you're really not behind because you have a lot of information and a lot of lower pieces. And information and uh, lower pieces can be more important than the higher rank pieces your opponent has captured. So that's, that's a very important concept of uh, Stratego. You have to learn to understand that uh, information can be just as important or even more important than captured pieces. So let's get started. This player was a 300 level player, 300 ELO, and I think he had over a thousand games. I think he was below 500 player, you know, like 500 and 500, something like that, a little bit below, but over a thousand games. So let's get started with this uh, game because we probably have a lot to talk about. I really love this strategy with the major. Uh, I'm really falling in love with it. Uh, I've only played 40 games and I haven't played in over a month. I probably won't play till the fall and hopefully I'll play some higher level players in the you know, 500 to 700 range trying this out, uh, the major attack strategy. The only problem with me with this uh, strategy is uh, you have to remember a lot of things. Look at all the pieces he's moved already. And when you start lotting with the major, he starts moving, you know, players will start moving a lot of pieces and you have to remember all that stuff. Plus you have to remember the pieces, you know, the main pieces uh, that uh, captured your majors, whether it's the Marshal, General, Colonels, or Bombs. So hopefully we find the Marshal. So I think he's making a big mistake moving all these pieces early on. So we get a scout and a sergeant and we find a general. So, usually, uh, when I find a general early on in a game, it's that's one nice uh, advantage of uh, finding the general early on is the spy hasn't uh, hasn't had a chance to move around. So, and usually they keep the spy near the uh, general, either on a diagonal or next to it. So I'm thinking right off the bat that maybe this could be the spy. This is a very popular spot for a spy. Or maybe this could be the spy. And you might not find that out, uh, or you might not remember where the general started uh, if, if, if it gets revealed later in the game. But when it gets revealed early in the game, it gives you an idea where the spy might be. And I think most beginners tend to keep the spy near the uh, general because they have to worry about lotterers and um, and uh, martial blitzers, and they don't want to have their general get pinned early on without their spy nearby. And some players, like myself, will just sacrifice the marshal against the general if the game's early on and it's even. I'll sacrifice my marshal just to see uh, if they have it covered with the uh, spy, because I think I can play Yomas as well with a general spy versus their marshal. So right away I'm thinking this could be a spy or this could be a spy. And I like this because, hey, that's where I have my spy. So maybe great minds think alike. Maybe he has it here. So we have to just, you know, think it's one of these two. You don't think it's this because, uh, you know, that's in the open. So... Uh, we have to prove maybe that it's one of these two or, or get more, uh, get more information that validates that it's either this or this as the game goes on, but at least we have an idea. So, and we wouldn't have known that if, uh, 
you know, this general uh, wasn't forced to come uh, take my major. So that's a nice advantage of attacking early with the major. So we're going to keep on attacking with majors until we find the uh, marshal. So we find a lieutenant. That's good. And there we go. We find a marshal. So this now I can play a normal game and I don't have to attack with this major anymore. And I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, I think most players would uh, sacrifice, most uh, top players would sacrifice two majors to find uh, a marshal in general at the start of the game. I think that's definitely worth it. And plus, I'm up a lieutenant and uh, sergeant. You wish you would have maybe a captain. Uh, it's very close. He's probably winning. But he doesn't know where my high pieces are. And I know where his high pieces are. I just have to remember them. So, general and, and marshal. And we think one of these two is a spy. So, that's a pretty good start with information. So now the goal is to put him, he's going to be on the defensive for most of the game because he doesn't know where my high pieces are and I know where his high pieces are. And a lot of times beginners, they go in prevent defense mode. They try to protect their lead instead of increasing their lead, which is a mistake. And uh, they wind up uh, constantly scouting lower pieces of mine with their lower pieces and eventually you bleed them and hopefully get enough smaller pieces and then uh, that they can't scout you anymore. And then you can bring up your high pieces later in the game to hopefully make up whatever major deficit you have. And you don't, in most of these games, you don't have to, you don't have to match the major deficit. You only have to usually get to within one. So if I was down three, I'd hope to get two majors. Or if I, like, I'm only down two majors now, I only really need to get one major and hopefully enough smaller pieces that I will be uh, winning the game. So let's see how this contest goes. I really, I, maybe I should have pulled him back. I really didn't want to take it, but because I didn't want to reveal this major. Now I have to protect it and bury it. And so now that's what we want to do. We want to start to bleed his smaller pieces. And, and ideally, we want to get rid of their scouts as early as possible. Because then you can move around your big pieces without... Uh, without them getting revealed from a distance. So that's nice. And then you can move your spy around too. So, but the goal is to get rid of his lower pieces because he's going to be probing to find your high pieces. So basically you have to try to defend your high pieces from being revealed at the same time, trying to get his lower pieces. Now, usually the way most players, uh, the way they, uh, play defense, Early on is they're going to use their low pieces. So you can use your low pieces. You can bring out sergeants and miners, hopefully to get some spy, I mean, some scouts early on. And then later on, bring out your captains to hopefully get some uh, lieutenants. And even if you swap captains, one or two, that's fine. Because one of the other goals is you want to try to uh, clear a lane so you can attack all different sides and go back and forth with ease. You want to increase your mobility. And uh, just constantly put pressure on your opponent. So like I'm bringing out this miner. I hope to get a uh, scout. He has four more scouts. So you're just trying to bring, and that's like, that's nice when you have, you, you want a couple low pieces behind the legs. So they will think it's a high piece because usually marshals and generals are here, especially in the silver and low gold level. So you hopefully, they think it's a high piece and you hope they waste scouts on it.
Uh, that's pretty good. We got a miner. So they're bring, he's bringing up, and early on you'll you'll know if he's going to use his mid level pieces to defend or low pieces. So he's going to be using his low pieces. So you really can bleed a person when they do that, and before they even know it, you might have a have a good portion of their army, and they're going to wonder what happened to all their scouting pieces. I probably should have stayed here. That probably was a mistake. I should have waited for the scout to attack the miner. I think that was, that was a waste. So we have to remember the lieutenant. So we have the general and the lieutenant. And that's a lieutenant. And a marshal. It's hard for me to remember everything. I just have a really terrible memory. Now, I could take that, but sometimes I don't. And I like, you know, sometimes they'll, if you don't take them, they'll t attack you. And that gives you an extra step on, on the general. So that's nice. And it's really nice if you don't know what this piece is. So then you have two steps, and then if you have an escape lane or you have some scouts, you have time to scout what this piece is. But maybe I should have taken this piece. I know sometimes I don't. I you, These games can be really slow and long, so there's no hurry to take the pieces. We know that's a lieutenant. That's the uh, a general, and that's the marshal, and I guess that's another lieutenant. I even forget the pieces when I review it. <laughs> I have a bad memory. So there we go. So he's going through his scouts fairly quickly. He's only got two left. And you don't have to be worried that you're down two majors. It's it's really not that big of a deal. It's 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 just so hard for beginners to uh, let me stop this. It's so hard for beginners to overcome uh, being down two majors. I remember when I started, and I got down a major, and I thought, "How do you how do you get that back without lottoing?" You know, I was always uh, uh, you, you would get into swap games, and then you would lose because you you could never make that major up. And it was like, "How do I how do I attack or how do I get that major back?" And so I hope these games help you out. I really think this uh, playing from behind uh, games, uh, learning how to bleed your opponent. And then also we'll learn how to, uh, how to play with the lead. So you, you, don't, you don't get bled with uh, the smaller pieces. Uh, so we'll learn that as well. But these, these games should help, I think, most uh, bronze players and silver players become much, much better players. And, and it really is fun to play because right off the beginning, you, you get information and then you can start planning. It's so good when you know the marshal and the noted, you, you know the general and they don't know your high pieces. It's, it's, you, you can dictate uh, how the game goes. You, you're in control. You can uh, be in control of attacking and they usually have to play defense, especially if they have an open flag, then they have to guard that flag. Uh, but every piece that comes up can be a general or a marshal or a colonel. As long as you keep them hidden, uh, he's going to be pl playing scared. And it's hard to play. Uh, it's hard to win when you're playing scared. You really want to be aggressive. So that's another advantage of, of getting information early and hiding information from your opponent, even if it costs you uh, some important pieces. So I probably forgot where everything's going. Uh, I guess this was the lieutenant. This is the general. 
we think this is a spy or maybe this okay so we swap sergeants so he has two scouts left And you can see, I go through my buffer. I really, I have to really think here, what you know, what to do, what what am I trying to do, what pieces am I targeting? I have to find targets to attack too. I mean, knowing the marshal in general is great, but you have to find. I'm trying to find lieutenants, captains, colonels, and majors. So he moved this piece, so that's probably, I don't know if that's a spy bringing out in the open. We ain't, so he moved it, so we're still thinking maybe this is a spy, but he moved this over here. Have to keep an eye on that. Uh, so this probably isn't a spy. I don't think he would do that. So we're thinking this is a spy now, and that's a captain. So we got another target, so that's good. The only problem is, can I remember it? Probably not. And you always want to make sure a scout, you know, a lot of times they want to scout the piece behind the leg and you don't want your marshal. That's the last thing you want to happen. You want to keep this hidden as long as possible. If your marshal gets found, it's going to be hard to come back. You probably have to swap marshals and then keep your general hidden, but you'd rather keep your marshal hidden as long as possible until you can make a big impact in the game. That's where patience comes in, and a lot of beginners don't have patience. I don't like playing long games either, but you still can play uh, patiently in a half an hour game. You don't have to play an hour and a half. So I think this was a general, lieutenant, and this is something else, probably a weak piece, minor or sergeant. So I can bring my colonel up here because we know, you know, the marshal is over there. And the general's over here, so the colonel can do some damage over here. So I put pressure on the general. He has to guard these pieces. And so you see, I can dictate where he goes. And I hide my my major, so hopefully he forgets what that is. Because remember, this was revealed, and that's always a good good uh, trick to do is just to tuck it away in an open slot here and don't move it for a while and shift pieces, and players will forget what this is. Most players will. It's only the top players that, and even they will forget. So. Uh, so if, a, if, a, if one of your top pieces gets found early in the game, you know, people might remember your marshal. I always lose a marshal too, but uh, try not to. But, you know, it's a lot easier for people to lose a major or a captain or a lower piece. You know, they'll probably remember the colonel, general, or marshal. But this becomes critical later in the game because he forgot what this piece was. So I always try to fill in these slots on the back row if you, you know, if you open them up. And that can definitely confuse your, uh, your uh, opponent. I like doing that, make a solid block. And you never know, if they played a couple games in a row, they'll, they'll forget uh, 
because a lot of times they're concentrating on what they're doing and not what you're doing. So I think I'll lose this miner. He has a miner there. So see, you can see he's bringing up junk pieces. He's hiding his high pieces. He's trying to preserve his lead. So we have the general lieutenant. This is probably John Minor. I think this was a captain, maybe. I already forgot. Okay, so we got a lieutenant over here. That's good. We'd like to get a lieutenant. You just put pressure. I don't do this enough to really put, I have to get better at it, to really put pressure. I'm glad he took me. That was good. So now I can back up. And a lot of times you can back up and just hide them away. And hopefully he forgets where it goes. Or your opponent forgets, you know, loses it and all the shuffling and shifting. So that was a minor. I think I lose this minor. Marshall minor. I think captain. Uh, I don't know. General, lieutenant. Yeah, I'm probably struggling saying, <laughs> where is everything? Let's see where we stand right now. Uh, my opponent has still has the two majors. I haven't made any dents in that yet, but we're up, we're up two lieutenants. So we're slowly bleeding them. Two lieutenants. We're even on sergeants. Usually I'm down sergeants, uh, and I'm down a minor. And I'm up a scout. So we're slowly uh, trying to uh, gain the lead. These games take a lot of patience. They really do. They're very mem memory intensive. So there's a lieutenant, so that's good. So now we're up three lieutenants, three lieutenants to zero. So if I get another major, I could swap out and win the game, even though he has the highest piece, but I'll have three majors. So at the end of the game, let's say we each have two minors or three minors, and I have three lieutenants, and he has one major, I'm going to win that game as long as I can... I'll find the major. So you have to watch the whole, you have to read the whole, whole uh, graveyard and understand where you stand in the game before you decide whether or not to swap pieces, you know, trade pieces. So now this piece is probably a major or colonel. It's probably higher than a captain, but sometimes they, they will swap if they're, if they think they're ahead. So, but it's probably a major. And I, th I think this, I think this is bad what he did here. When you move pieces from the back row, that just narrows, it narrows down where your flag might be and how the bomb structures might be. So I don't like doing that. If you're moving pieces from the back row, uh, I would change my setup. And try not to move. You don't want to move uh, move as few pieces as possible because all you do is give your opponent targets. It's probably okay to do it against me because I forget a lot of times. Uh, but uh, really good players will remember all the pieces you moved and you're going to be in trouble. So I guess this is the marshal and okay, so now that's good. So we found a major. I don't have to get it right away. It, it, you can always get it later. That's what I always say. You can always get it later. Uh, maybe I could rush up there, but I can get it later. And, and hopefully he forgets that this piece was revealed and you just have to be patient.
but it's just one more thing to remember now. This is probably this was probably a major or captain. This was or colonel. This is a major, general, lieutenant, marshal. And I think is this the minor? And I lost the captain. So you can see I already lost a lot of the pieces. But at least we know the marshal and general and major because I want to get that major because if I get that major, I'm going to be winning. And then you can almost swap out. And your opponent might not even know he's losing. So that's the problem. So many beginners think they're winning when they have the highest piece, but they're losing. So I forgot this was maybe the... Was this the colonel? Or was that the minor? See, I already forgot. I think this was was a minor, but I thought it was a higher piece. Okay, well we know this is the marshal and this is the general here, and the lieutenant and this is the major. I want to get that major. Now he's blocking off a path, so it's easy to get the uh, major. And so it was the minor. That's kind of unfortunate. I wish it would have been something higher. But I'm winning now. And my I don't think my opponent knows that. Even though he's up a major. Maybe maybe technically it's it's close because I don't know where his majors all are. But if if I find his last major and I and I hold the three lieutenant lead, then I'm winning. I'm going to win in the in the late game. So, so I don't mind swapping generals now. And if if you notice when people don't mind swapping, then you might want to look at the scoreboard to see where you stand. Because if a person wants to swap with you, they probably think they're winning. So now I want to get my colonel in the game. He's bringing his general over to swap. And that's just so hard. You have to also watch that when your piece is pinned and pieces are moving over here quickly that you don't get into a force misclick. It's easy to do. You're concentrating over here. A piece moves, you move. That piece moves, you move again. And then he moves his marshal in front of your general, and then you move a piece over here and go, oh no, you don't want that to happen. And it's it, it can happen very easily, so don't do that. You can watch my video on uh, force misclicks. It's, uh, it happens, it, it can happen quite a lot. And you can actually do that to people. It's kind of a cheesy way to uh, gain a piece, but you know, if they play too fast, they play too fast. So. But now, since he's bringing his uh, general over here, I'd like to get my colonel over here, and I don't have to worry about finding a major over here with my captain. I want to get this lieutenant. He's moving all sorts of pieces over here, right? That's good. He doesn't have the. See, you gotta watch that so you don't. He doesn't get a force misclick on you. It's best to take your hand off the mouse. That's really good. Now he only has one scout left. That's great.
So he wants to trade and I'm happy to trade because I'm winning. I'm up three lieutenants. Now, sometimes a, a smarter player would probably have their colonel ready to anticipate a colonel coming up. So sometimes you might want to bring the marshal up, but you don't want to attack unless you unless you let them attack you, and maybe the colonel hits the marshal. But this player didn't have a colonel ready. He he was worried about the general for whatever reason, and and he didn't he didn't have a colonel here or here, which was a mistake. So now he's going to lose one of these two pieces. And we think to still the spies here. And it's looking like the flag is on this side for sure. And now if he's going to lose this piece, if this isn't the colonel, he's going to lose this piece because this piece had moved. So he was forced to take me there. So I'm great. I'm doing great now. Uh, swapping pieces. Uh, well, he's swapping for me, which is great. So, you know, I'm still down a major, but I'm up four lieutenants and we're even sergeants, even miners and even scouts. So he probably doesn't know it, but he's in a lot of trouble. But he was forced to move. He, he was forced to attack with this colonel because this piece moved you know he 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 would have had to a, a bet that my memory was bad that i didn't know this piece moved but this piece had moved so you can do that against beginners gamble that their memory's bad but against good players they they're going to remember most of them are going to remember every piece that has moved And see, I also have a huge advantage. He still doesn't know where my high pieces are. He should know where this major is, but I'm sure he forgot. Because he's mo concentrating on moving all his pieces. He forgot where my major went. Guarantee you. It's hard to remember that stuff when you're concentrating on your own moves. And, and that's why I say uh, one thing people should do is for every move, for every time unit you take to make a move, you should concentrate uh, three three times on what your opponent just did, because that'll help you remember uh, what pieces of move and where that piece came from, and 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 remember revealed pieces and remember bombs, and and try to think like your opponent as well. Try to look at your board the way your opponent would look at it, to see where your vulnerabilities are. And you'll play much better and you'll win a lot more games. So now I want to come in here because, you know, he had the marshal on. Well, the marshal, I guess, was here or here at the start. I think it was here. So the flag could be in a corner. And almost every time I think it's a corner flag, it never is. But we can come in here with a minor and maybe hit this piece. And, you know, then that could open up if this is a flag or if this is a flag. And... I'll, you know, he's probably not going to attack this because he doesn't know what it is. And he's scared of losing pieces and he doesn't have many scouting pieces left. He doesn't have any lieutenants, one sergeant, one scout. You hate to lose your last scout. Not many miners or three miners left. So that's the, the nice thing when you have a lot of high pieces. You can come in there and they're going to be afraid to attack you. And you can bring a miner in, you know, bluff a miner all the way to the back row. So that's why it's so important to keep your high pieces uh, hidden as long as possible, especially when you're behind. But, you know, now I, I uh, regain the lead. So now I'm, I'm almost 
positive over here that this is a spy because the general was here at the start of the game and this hasn't moved and he parked his colonel here for safety right in front of this and you know like i said it's pretty it could be a it's it's not a, a a popular spot for a spy but it's not a bad spot maybe it's a little unusual but since i did it you know i'm thinking that too so but now i want to bring up the marshal and the major and we really want to make the game easy by trying to get maybe one captain or two captains and really make now if i was really brave i might bring my spy up here i think i could get the marshal if i brought the spy up here but i'm usually too conservative with the spy uh, i usually wait till the last spot our scout is gone uh it all depends on your opponent. Uh, he hasn't used that scout, so maybe it's buried, you know, like mine is here. But, uh, you know, good players like FKS and, and, and uh, I know Stratego Bob, he, he uses spy a lot. He was very creative with his spy, but I think FKS is very aggressive with his, his spy. So uh, that would be a good time to bring the spy up because maybe he wouldn't expect that since he does have a scout. Maybe he wouldn't suspect that as a spy, but it seems like every time I do that, it gets scouted, so I'd rather save it. But I want to now try to get some captains. So now we're going to go down. And that was good. It was a bomb. Sergeant, Sergeant, Miner. Sergeant, okay. So now, what does that tell us? That tells us he doesn't have a, an open flag on the back row, right? So the only place he could have a bombed in flag would be here, right? If he had bomb, 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 bomb. So I can't go crazy with my miners yet. I can't use them as scouts. Because just in case he has a, and I've seen a lot of that lately, players having, you know, this diamond with the, with the uh, bomb and a uh, flag in the center there. So, but now we want to try to get uh, a captain, and I think this might be his major. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe it was. Maybe it was uh, a captain. This could have been a captain. And the marshal. So we want to go in here. These pieces have all moved. This has moved. This, I think this moved. This, yeah, I think this, 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 this. So a lot of these, this hasn't moved. So I can target this. And I think this is a garbage piece because it came from the back. So that might be a minor or, 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 uh, it's not the sergeant. So it's a minor or maybe a scout. And this might be a major. And this might be a major or a captain. So we're going to try to get, hopefully my major gets a captain. And not not another major. And then hopefully I can get a, uh, a captain with my, uh, or a major with my marshal. That would be nice. So I say he can't really go here because this could be my spy. See, that's that's the dilemma you have. You know, this piece this piece has moved, so he could attack me. But if it's a marshal, he loses it. But he's not going to attack it now because this piece is here. So this could be the marshal. So he doesn't want to attack this, but he really can't go here because if it's a spy, it's a hell of a move by me, and then he looks stupid, right? So that's the problem when you don't have many scouts left late in the game and that's the problem when you don't know and that's why i hate i hate it when i don't uh know my opponent where my opponent's marshal is it just frustrates the hell out of me so that's why i like this uh major strategy it, it even though you get down two or three majors there's a pretty good chance you find the uh marshal at the opening so that that uh i really like that Okay, so let's see. You know, he's moving some more pieces. 
So I don't want to attack this because I think this I think this is like a miner. A miner or scout. I'm trying to figure out where it came from. You can see I'm using my buffer. I'm trying to think. And then trying to think what it might be. You think where it came from and think what it might be. Is it worth attacking? So I go over here now. This is going to tell me a lot. He might think this is my marshal. He gets scared and he goes, what? Right in front of this, which, you know, this almost guarantees that it's a spy. If I go here and he doesn't move, he's almost telling me that this is a spy. So he doesn't move. I'm surprised he didn't attack me here to see if it was the marshal. But he wants to see what this piece if this is a spy. So now I'm like, yes, that's a captain, yes. But I'm not going to hit this because this hasn't moved. So I'm not going to be stupid now. Because we're already winning. I mean, we're winning. If you you and now this is this was a bad move by him. You know, he probably assumed this was no longer the uh spy since I didn't move out of the way, right? I'm not going to attack this, even though I'm almost 100% sure it's a spy. Uh, because I have I have a captain and four lieutenant lead on him, even though I'm down a major. We don't want to go down two majors just in case this is a bomb. But this was a big mistake on his part uh, coming here. Maybe he thought I was bluffing with a captain since you know he hasn't found my marshal the whole game. Maybe he thought I brought a lower piece up here. And, uh, you know, he, he assumed it wasn't the spy because I didn't get out of the way. But, uh, you know, he's losing. If he looked at the, if he looked at the uh, graveyard, being down five mid-level pieces and only up a major, he's losing. So if this is a marshal, I could swap with him and he'd be in you know, really bad shape. But I know this piece has moved, so I'm going to attack that. And I'm going to believe believe in my read that this was the uh, spy. And it looks like this is where the flag is. So now he's in really bad shape now. Now he's down six, six mid-level pieces. And, uh... So what should he do? Uh, you know, he could lotto. But I think what he probably should do now, my, my high pieces are out of position. So wherever his majors are, if this is a major, he should start coming down and attacking because my high pieces are out of position. So he should come down with his majors, wherever they are, and start attacking. attacking try to attack the pieces that have moved. And, or else even Lotto, because he doesn't have many pieces left. And, you know, look at this. If he Lotto down here, he could do a lot of damage, right? If he came down here with a major. So the one thing he should not do is he shouldn't swap. And, unfortunately, he's he's stuck in that mentality where they think, oh, I got, I got a major, a high piece on the board, I'm going to win. But, and now... That's not bad. Even though he swapped the marshals, that's not bad. But now he cannot swap majors. The last thing he wants to do is swap majors. He has two majors on me. He could come down and try to trap pieces the rest of the game. And then even Lotto, if, if he has to be desperate and, and try to even it up or get close. But he should not swap because what is he going to do with just one major? He's not going to do much. Right? I can move my pieces all around, block his miners, and he's not going to be able to capture any of my pieces, so he's going to wind up losing. So that's that's very critical to read the whole scoreboard, and that was a big mistake there. Uh, that was a very big mistake doing that. So now, the... the uh, the only thing I have to do to make this an easy victory, I mean, it's it's really over. All I have to do is find his last major. 
and you usually want to bring out your worst piece come up there and hopefully attacks it so you got to remember that a lot of times especially like when marshals are traded you know then people usually bring out their spy as a scout so just remember that so you don't attack that piece because it's probably a junk piece trying to find your next highest piece so don't fall for that uh stratego pattern trap so when i you know might as well use my uh spy to try to find his uh, last major and then see what all the pieces that have moved so i can you know i have my four captains to his two captains so it should be easy to trap them So this is just basically mopping up now, trying to find his, uh, his major, you know, even if I lose a captain trying to find his major, it's not a big deal. So he should be moving these pieces out of here. He's just trapping his own pieces. And we find the last major. So I move over here for the two square roll. And then start attacking all the pieces that have moved with my captains. You know, try to swap the last two captains. Because you don't want a captain coming down here and lottoing. That could be a major problem. So this was a really good game uh, to just show you how to bleed your opponent slowly over time. Have patience. And... You know, I wound up getting the uh, six or the the, uh, the four lieutenant lead on him, and then then we made the big impact getting the uh, captains, and then you know being down six mid level pieces, it's just it's just you just can't overcome that. So now he's just going through the motions. And we just don't want a miner to slip by. So all we have to do is trap a couple more pieces and we'll win this game. So it's, uh, it's fun playing this way. I really enjoy, uh, using the major attack strategy. So, here's his major. He's probably going to come lotto now. That's his only hope that I have an open flag. We can block off all his pieces. So, I guess what we can learn from this game is don't don't swap uh pieces unless you know and there you can see he was i guess he was a uh a 300 elo okay a few games below 500. so don't swap pieces unless you know you're absolutely winning and that was his mistake and i like these double bombs here you know, it's so tempting to hit this piece. You got to get to the late game for that to happen, though. There was a spy. There was his last scout. 
I don't like that hit there. Why hit this? You know, the flag is more than 90% of the time on the back row. Why not stop here and maybe move here and hit this piece or this piece? Uh, I think that was a waste of a scout. You never know. You might win. Probably not. But, you know, this this was most likely not going to be the, the flag, especially on the second row here in this in this lane. That's probably the least likely spot for a flag on the second row. So, um, but he probably knew I had a bombed in flag. And then so we wind up uh, capturing all those pieces. Now you can see how bad, you know, at the end of the game here, I had uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten more pieces than my opponent did. So that's a lot of, uh, a lot of pieces. I really bled him uh, to get s such a huge lead. And he just made some tactical errors uh, where he shouldn't have swapped. So always make sure you uh, know whether you're winning or losing. Make sure you read the entire graveyard. And then, and then if you're ahead, you know, it's okay to swap. But if you're not, then don't. You know, uh, try to win the game. Don't don't swap. All right, I hope you like this game. I'm going to do some more of these uh, major attack games because they're so much fun. I love playing this way. I really do. And they really should help uh, bronze and, uh, and uh, uh, silver players get better. I think once you learn how to play from behind, once you learn uh, that information is just as important as uh, uh, pieces, You'll learn how to play better and then also learn how to plan better. And, uh, and you'll win more games and go up the leaderboard a lot faster. Alright, thanks for watching and I'll work on the next video. Bye for now. Hope you learned something.